something called negative energy. Now, negative energy sounds like something that was created by a physicist in a room without windows for too long. And, um, and that's true, actually. But, but, but nevertheless, it, 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 it does exist. We know that configurations, due, due to the laws of quantum mechanics and special relativity, on very small scales, negative energy configurations can exist for, for very short times. And in fact, they're responsible for, um, we think, for the phenomenon that made him famous among physicists, the fact that black holes can radiate. So for very short times, negative energy configurations can exist. But what is an open question, is an open question at the forefront of modern physics, is can you create a negative energy configuration on a scale large enough and long enough so that you could propel a spacecraft from one place to another? That is an open question, and people like me get paid to, to think about it, which is nice. Now, if you're like my wife at this point, you will say, who cares? And, uh, and, 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 and maybe you don't care about warp drive. And, and, um, but if you could have negative energy configurations, then you could have something that, that's much more familiar and, and fun for, for people on, like Star Trek and science fiction in general, and that's wormholes, which, which of course are, are very important in Star Trek. Well, let me tell you about what wormholes are. And, and my little universe will help me here. A wormhole is a shortcut through space, literally a shortcut that didn't exist before the wormhole existed. So, and, and again, my two-dimensional universe, I can show you this. This is a two-dimensional curved universe. Now, if you are, were an ant living on this two-dimensional curved universe, you, and you wanted to go from here to there, you'd have no choice but to crawl along the surface. Unless you're a very intelligent ant who's taken general relativity, and then you'd know that if you put a huge amount of energy here, you could curve space there. And if you put a huge amount of energy there, you could curve space right there. And if you push them together and your fingernails are cut, you could um, hold them together, cut a little hole, and create a tunnel. Literally a shortcut that did not exist before these two points. And if you go around this way, these two points are still separated by a huge distance, but the wormhole would give you a shortcut. And it's the thing, not only in Star Trek, but if you saw the movie Contact, it's the thing that Jodie Foster went through uh, there. Now, Wormholes, as I say, are great shortcuts through space. But the problem is, and this is what Premier Ravani was probably referring to, that in fact, stable wormholes can't exist if normal matter is all there is. We've been able to prove that mathematically. Because you see, if you want to make a huge curvature here, you have to put a huge amount of energy here and a huge amount of energy there. But anyone who's taken high school physics knows that gravity sucks, okay? It always pulls, it never pushes. And we can prove mathematically that either end of the wormhole will collapse to form a black hole out of which nothing can escape in a time shorter than it will take to traverse the wormhole. So there are no traversable wormholes in nature if normal matter is all there is. But, you see, if you had negative energy, then you could fill the mouth of the wormhole with negative energy. Negative energy is gravitationally repulsive. And you could hold the mouth of the wormhole open, and therefore you could, you could have stable, traversable wormholes if negative energy exists. Great, okay. Now, at this point, if you're like my wife, um, you'll say, who cares? Now, <laughs> you might not care about warp drive or wormholes, but the neat thing is if you could build a traversable wormhole, then you could build a time machine. And everyone's interested in time machines. And we all want to go back in time and um, correct the errors of our youth or, or relive them, depending upon the mood. And, um, and in fact, when the physics of Star Trek came out, it caused a huge stir in England, because Stephen had said, in, originally had said, that time travel was impossible. And in, in the foreword of my book, uh, he says, given the laws of physics, because we now know it, you know, we, we can't say that. He, he agreed with me, because I was right. Um, and, but he recently, but before he, you know, so on the front page of, of the London Times said, Stephen Hawking changes his mind on time travel um, in this new book. And the reason, he gave a very good argument for why time travel was impossible. He said, if time travel were possible, we'd already be inundated by tourists from the future. It's a good argument. I countered him by saying that they all went back to the 1960s and no one noticed. And, and, uh, and he... He couldn't argue with that, so he had to change his mind. But, um, but actually, there's, there are more serious paradoxes than that. And, and this is one of the reasons that physicists don't like time travel. Because 
Well, my favorite paradox is called the grandmother paradox. What happens if you go back in time to kill your grandmother, okay, before your mother's born? Okay, you go back in time, you kill your grandmother before your mother's born, right? but then your mother was never born, and therefore you were never born, so how did you go back in time and kill your grandmother? Okay, think about it, it gives you a headache. Okay, now it gives physicists headaches too, and that's one of the reasons why many physicists have argued time travel is impossible. But the interesting thing is, and this is another remarkable facet of the universe which I wish more people would understand. The universe is the way it is, whether we like it or not. And it's not up to us to decide what's sensible or not sensible, it's up to the universe, and then we have to figure it out. And right now, given the laws of physics as we now know them, if traversable wormholes are possible, then time machines are possible, and then we have to live with those consequences. Now, I actually brought a time machine with me too, so I'll show you too. I don't have time. I don't know if I have time to show it actually, but um, well, we'll go back and, and we'll do it. But um, it's not a very. Um, but there we go. Okay, I, it's a. Uh, this is again a two-dimensional curved universe with a galaxy, as you can see, which I've curved, and I can connect these two points in this galaxy with a. Toilet paper roll wormhole. Can you see that in there? It's, again, it's an it's impressionistic experiment, so I don't care if you can't see it too well. Okay, uh, but I want to now make time travel possible for you all. Okay. You have to watch this very carefully. Watch very carefully. First, I'll show this end of the audience. Okay. Ready? See that? Need it. Let's do that again. Okay. Uh, you you want to know what you missed, didn't you? Okay. Wow. Okay. Now, why is that a time machine? What's well, really simple? You're on this end of the wormhole, point A, and you watch your friend. At, you have a friend at the other end of the wormhole, and she's at point B, and her end of the wormhole is doing a big circle in background space. Say the circle is five light years around, and that end of the wormhole is traveling at near the speed of light. Okay, so it takes it five years to go in that circle. But remember, she's traveling through sp her end of the wormhole is traveling through space very fast, so her clock is slowed down. So for her, that whole trip may just take a week. Okay? So she is now five years minus a week behind you in time. So if you go through the wormhole, you'll come out five years minus a week earlier. Now, if that doesn't bother you, say that the whole thing starts two light years away, so then you get in a rocket ship, it takes you two light years to come back here, you arrive back three years before you now, that's not a scam. That's really true. If wormhole, traversable wormholes are possible, that time machines are possible, and we have to live with those consequences. And we just don't know the answer. We don't know if, ne and it, it, it all depends. It, this is what amazes me. Three of the most fast, fantastical things in Star Trek, warp drive, wormholes, and the three wildest things you can think about are, given the laws of physics as we now understand them, not impossible. We don't know if they're possible, but we don't know if they're impossible. And that's great. So that's why I give the Star Trek writers a B plus. Because <laughs> I'm an easy grader. And, uh, and, it's, and it is amazing to me that all these things just depend on things at the forefront of modern physics, which are really at the edge of our understanding. And, and we will one day maybe know the answer, and hopefully uh, some young person here today may come up with the answer to whether these things are possible. But that's as far a field in terms of general relativity and, and uh, the esoterics of, of general relativity I want to, I want to talk about, because I want to come back down to earth a little bit more and return next to the thing that really seduced me into writing the book, which is the transporter. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, just too, way too much. And I, and, uh, and I would have really liked to have a transporter. And, and when I was thinking about it, I thought, you know, uh, gee whiz, how, how would you make a transporter? And I thought, gee, all the neat physics, nuclear physics, all the neat stuff you'd have to think about. I thought, this might be fun. But right away, I realized I wouldn't make a transporter the way the Star Trek writers tell you, okay? Because, you know, they tell you, if you read the Star Trek technical manual, you take someone and you vaporize them, you turn them into individual atoms, and you take those atoms in a matter stream and you, you move them over to here and then you, and then you put those atoms back together again and make the person over here.